like, follow and subscribe at BMLDN for the latest and exclusive content. Yes, people, we are back. Another episode of Beam. I'm your host, JR. And today I'm joined by a brother that's really making some big moves in the fashion world, created some crazy jackets for the biggest people in Hollywood and in the UK, mm. fashion designer Jay Parson. How are you doing, my bro? Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I'm doing well. Yeah, thanks yeah, man. Thanks yeah. for coming through, man. Um, I want to start off, man. Forest Hill, Lewisham. That's, yeah. that's home for you. Yes. Um, yeah, tell us what it was like growing up there. Wow, it was... It was a pretty cool area, to be honest. Um, had my friends, you know, family. It's everyday life, really. South As a London. youth, South London <laughs> lifestyle, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't know how to describe it. If you know, you know, I guess. Yeah, you know, man. Just uh, bad company, just finding yourself, really. Yeah. Early stages of life, so, yeah. I hear that, man. Um, now, you're real creative. Um, you've explored many avenues, um, but music, you could say, was your first love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you start like, getting into music? How did you first start getting into that? Um, it started off in like school, to be honest. Um, Forest Hill. I used to attend a school called Forest Hill Boys. And like, it started from like grime and just like being inspired by like the Dizzy Rascals, the Wileys, the Kanos from like an early early stage, you know, from when I was like, I'd say like 14. So yeah, I just took a like into the, the grime coach, you know, and just put my own take on it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I started recording um, at a friend's house. His name's Protege. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's a big producer right now. Yeah, I've yeah, heard yeah, him. I've yeah, heard yeah. of Protege he's actually. He's a big yeah. producer yeah, actually. Yeah, he's a big producer right now. So that's where it all started really. Yeah, man. That's big. That's big, man. Yeah. And um, so, so at what point did you um, become affiliated with Frosted Ice Inc. Mm -hmm. and Frost? Because um, okay. yeah, a lot of people may know you from, 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 from that era. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say um, in like 2010. Yeah. I'd say, but even before that, because Frost has always been like a, a family friend. Yeah. Due to my sister, used to teach him dance. Oh because, wow! Yeah, Frost came from a dancing background. So yeah, um, um, my sister used to teach him dance. So that's how the connection okay. kind of stemmed from there. And he was uh, setting up like a music label off the back of uh, Princess Trust. And he started his own uh, label yeah. and I was interested in music at the time, but it was a different angle from like the grime stuff. I wanted, I had more of like an alternative um, R&B, uh, like indie rock pop sound. And I reached out to Frost and he liked my music and it started from there. Yeah, man. Yeah. Shout out Frost, man. Obviously, we've yeah. had him on the <laughs> show before. That's, and the, um, that's the family. Yeah, man. And he, and he <laughs> told us about that dancing, so it's interesting to know about that connection. Yeah, um, yeah. You talked about your style, um, yeah. sort of in terms of music. Um, classic for me, Apple mm. Pie. <laughs> <laughs> Apple Pie Love yeah, was yeah, a classic yeah. song, man. Yeah, yeah. How did that come about? Because in my head, I'm thinking, bro, you didn't look at Apple Pie and make a song, bro. So, how, yeah, how did that come about? Do you know what? Yeah, it's funny. I was actually in the studio i was on the phone to like a lady friend and then i was just chilling it was quiet but because she didn't hear no music and anything so i lied to her i said i was at my house and i was making she's like oh what are you doing i was just like oh i'm just baking and she's like oh what are you baking i was like oh just just an apple pie or something like you know what i'm saying <laughs> i just randomly made it up and then obviously um an artist nay is obviously he was on the track as well he was making a beat and it was from some Eric Clapton sample. And then we just started vibing. It had like a nostalgic R&B vibe to it. So I was just saying, I just started making up lyrics saying, girl, I need you, <laughs> apple pie custard. Can I? That's the first line that came to my head. Yeah. So I kind of formed the song from that really, yeah. from me being on the phone to her and just, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it that's... was a girl I liked at the time, but she had a boyfriend. Okay. So, yeah, that was the vibe. Yeah, man. Shout out to that girl, man. She inspired the classic. Yeah, so, yeah man. Shout out to her, man, for sure. Girl, I need you. Apple pie custard. Can I feed you? I made it myself. I want to talk about your, your journey um, because a lot of people may not know, but you were born with a heart problem. Yeah. And um, 
you know, there was something that you actually went on to sort of document in terms of when you was going through your surgery. But yeah, yeah, yeah. talk to me about sort of when, that obviously you were born with it, but when yeah, did you begin yeah. to feel like different in terms of you may have had a problem with your heart? To be honest, it's funny. It was actually the same time I released Apple Pie Love. So when that song went number one, I was actually in hospital. Oh, wow. So yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I was recovering for a while from it. So that's when, that's when it happened really. Um, and yeah. and um, at the time, um, you chose to document you going into sort of surgery and yeah. going through that. What made you think, uh, or what made you sort of document that or diarise that in terms of your surgery and, and your post-op? Oh, just in case I didn't make it through surgery. Wow, that's deep. So yeah, yeah, because I had to like sign a form that in case like, I don't know, something happens in surgery. And yeah, that's, that's why I decided to um, like document it at the time, I guess, and write a book. So yeah, that's it, man. That's so, yeah, deep, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, man. So yeah. I was born with like, like a heart murmur, like, like my valve is leaking. You see my heart valve? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's leaking, and I've been born with this, and I've always been aware that I'm gonna have to undergo surgery at some point in my life. So it's just come to that stage where you have to fix it in order for me to like be like well again so i've always knew about it so yeah it's just one of those things really that i gotta get done because i was on the waiting list for like a year and a half so yeah they told me this sunday i'm gonna have it done which but yeah i'm gonna stay here overnight and i've got so the operation is at 7 30 in the morning i don't know to ask me is that out of 10? How much would you rate fame? 10. And why weren't you having your painkillers? Why are you trying to firm the pain? He's not, he's not been taking his painkillers. Talking back to music, um, you signed a, a deal with Mega Man. Yeah, uh, for for a period of time, how, how did that come about? Where you yeah had had that contract situation with Mega Man? Um, how did that come about? It came about through Frost and Mega Man had like a they was doing business together, and Mega Man had an idea of getting some artists together and started starting a new label off the back of uh, So Solid called Serenity Nine. So that's how that came about. Yeah, yeah man, that was that, that was a big look, man. Um, then um, you recently released a documentary called Fashion and Me, yeah. um, which which is dope. Um, and um, in that, you actually talking about talk about sorry, um, being in a situation where you were stabbed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell us tell us about that because <laughs> I looked at that. And I was like, wow, man, that's, that's a you know what I mean. That's yeah, it was like an altercation that um, I got into a few years ago when I was younger, and um, I was actually defending someone, so I had to basically I intervened. And that was the result, kind of thing. So, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't meant for me. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yeah, That's yeah. Crazy, man. And, and like, you seem like a, a positive guy. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we've just talked about two instances where you've had to go through adversity with your heart surgery and obviously being stabbed. Mm -hmm. um, has that changed you, or did it change you in terms of the way you was looking at things moving forward? Um, not really. I kind of like saw it as an opportunity to use my experience to like uh, make my art more like real and raw, if that makes sense. Mm. So, but um, obviously those kind of things do affect me um, up until this day, but um, what, what can you do, you know? You, yeah. got, you got two options, you know? Get busy living or get busy dying. Yeah, <laughs> no, I hear that man, for sure, for sure. Well, you're definitely living, man, you're definitely um, living. Um, I want to talk about Canada. Yeah. Because you, you took a, a short stint, or not a yeah. short stint, but you was over there for, for a while. Yeah. What made you go over to, to Canada and how was it over there, man? Um, what made me go? Um, I don't know. I just had enough of London. Um, I had enough of the, my music situation. I wasn't really happy. Um, I just come out of a relationship. I was getting evicted. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, I've things. had enough of this. I'm, I want to I wanna go to Canada and just start fresh not even start fresh just like have a break 
and just do some reflecting. Plus, I have a lot of family over there. Okay. So it just made sense at the time. Yeah, man. Yeah. I hear that, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, when you was out there, bro, um, Seth Rogen. Yeah. Yeah, you linked yeah. up with Seth. Seth's yeah. a really good friend of yours. Yeah, yeah. Like, how did that come about, man? Um, he actually had a shop um, downtown in, um, in the Toronto area. Um, and I met him at like a bar. Okay. And then, yeah, he, we were just, literally, he was like tipsy. And we were just exchange conversation. Like he took a liking to my accent and my style, I guess. And yeah, we just we just kept in contact, really. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's a good look. Um, and then um, another Canada native, Tory Lanes, is oh, yeah. someone that you're, yeah. you're good friends with as well. Yeah. Did that relationship start when you was in Canada, or how did that? No, come yes. About? Actually, funny enough, when I returned to London. He actually reached out because he saw one of my designs on my Instagram page and he direct messaged me and said, um, kind of, I like what you're doing kind of thing. Let's meet up. I'm going to be on tour in the UK soon. And I was just like, I just found it funny. I mentioned it to him. I was actually in <laughs> Can Canada and specifically I was actually staying in his neighborhood. Oh, wow. Which is like an area called Brampton. Okay. That's where like he was originally from. So I just felt like it was, it was organic. So yeah, man. I actually met him in Shoreditch. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he was staying in Shoreditch um, at the Ace Hotel. And like he invited me onto his tour and I think he was performing at Wireless at the time. This yeah, was like sick. 2017. What's it like going on tour with Tory Lanez, man? It must have been crazy. Yeah, no, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was active. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was cool, man, because it was like my first experience of like going to a festival. Because I've never, I would never went to a festival before. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really like festivals. There's too much people. Man. <laughs> no, I, hear, I get I anxiety. I get anxiety. Oh, okay. no, I hear what you're saying, man. I hear what you're saying. A man like Tory, you saying G, out here. We out here, you know what's going down. London City, told you, shut down wireless. All day, every day, you know how we get down. Fucking hell. Jay, you saying? I'm out here, man. Good emotional, man. So let's talk about um, fashion and, and again, one, one of your pieces. Um, what, at what point did you transition fully from music into looking at sort of fashion and designing jackets? What, well, what point was that? I would say it was in, it started in Canada. Cause I remember I used to like, like doodle on my like biker jacket. So I would have a, like a plain biker jacket like this and I would like paint on it and add like um, coins. It was like the Canadian dollars at the time. So I would just add like little alterations to my pieces anyway. I've always done that um, from young. And when I was in Canada, like people took a liking to it. And one of my barbers, he liked one of my jackets. One of my barbers in Canada. Okay. So he said to me, um, I can't afford your piece right now, but if you make me a jacket, you have free haircuts for life. Oh, that's a deal. <laughs> yeah, that's a deal. Oh, that's a deal. I'll take that. So oh, yeah, I was, I was, I was sold from that. So that's how it started. Yeah. But when I returned to the UK, um, I met an artist called Sway Lee, Sweet. which Big is artist. from uh, the Ray Sherman group, and yeah. they had the Black Beatles song. Big song. And that's what really sparked the idea of like, okay we can like take this serious. Yeah, man. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know what's crazy? Like, I, I, did you even know at that point that like, what you was wearing was gonna be something that was gonna be a pathway for you into fashion? Because I'm assuming you've probably met Sway Lee in a, in a party setting yeah. and you're just wearing that jacket because, you know what I mean? It's what you wanted to wear. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Like, did you know that it was gonna have that effect in terms of like, when you was wearing it at that point? No, I didn't. <laughs> nah, of course not. Um, yeah, it was like my first day coming back to the UK. Name some of your clients, man. Some, who have you made sort of designer jackets for? Like, who have you designed pieces for? Um, okay, we'll start with Sway Lee, Ashanti, Floyd Mayweather, um, Mr. Easy, um, Andy Ruiz. Heavyweight boxer, uh, champion. Yeah, yeah. The, the real Rick Ross. Um, who else? Amarion, um, 
You're way too humble with yeah. his name, bro. Man. You're way too humble with his uh, name. Uh, Erica Badu, uh, Janae Aiko. Wow. Um, yeah, I can't remember any yeah, of them. <laughs> but do you know what? I'm going to pick up on a couple of names that you mentioned. Um, mm. I want to pick up on Ashanti first. Yeah. Um, the reason I want to pick up on Ashanti is because if people follow you closely, they will know that you put up like a, what I'm going to call an Ashanti appreciation post. Oh, yeah. How yeah, do you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> probably like maybe like a year or two before yeah, that's you crazy. actually met her. So yeah. I was going to ask, like, what was it like to post that appreciation post and then meet her and make a, a piece for her in the end? Yeah, I thought that was quite magical, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, um, yeah, that was, yeah, that was special, man. Yeah. That was definitely special. She's definitely someone I've seen growing up, you know, and been, been quite fond of her and her music, so yeah. it was nice. Yeah, man. Yeah, it was big, humbling. <laughs> yeah, no, I can imagine, man. I, I can imagine. Um, and then um, you mentioned 4M Ever as well. Shouts out to, to the money team. Um, yeah. But um, interesting again, like you made a piece for him. Yeah. And then you kept it for three years. Yeah. 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 Tell, tell us about that, man. Yeah, How yeah. did that happen? Um, yeah. Um, it was at the time he was fighting McGregor. Okay. So, yeah, we was, we was actually, I remember we was actually in Tory Lane's tour bus watching the fight. But um, prior to then, I met him at a press conference. It was like me, Frost, and the money team. We was in, I think we was in Birmingham. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, I presented him a piece that I pre-designed for him. Um, and yeah, he took it, he liked it. He took two pictures of me. And then this was 2017 and 2020, he wore it for a Super Bowl. Okay. The weekend. Yeah. <laughs> That's mad. And I, I, I DM'd um, one of his DJs. His name's Jay Bling. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Is it, isn't that my jacket? He's like, yeah, bro. Oh, <laughs> I was like, oh, that's crazy. That's <laughs> it, man. We're on the, one of the biggest stages yeah. as well, Super Bowl yeah. and um, you know, the McGregor fight. So yeah, yeah. that's dope, man. Um, and then, yeah, got a, a piece that I'm a fan of, um, which is the one you made for Erica Badu. Oh, yeah. The Machino jacket. Yeah, yeah. How did that come about? Oh, yeah. Basically, um, I was invited to her show. I, was in, I met her twice, actually. So I was invited to her show at Hammersmith Apollo. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, um, I was set to, like, design her a piece. Um, Shout out to John Jr. He does like events and stuff. He brings all the great artists over here. And yeah, long story short, I created a, a jacket that I thought she would appreciate it. Mm. You know, bearing in mind her style and stuff. So yeah, she, she loved it. And she ended up hugging me and saying, you know what I like. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, it was, a, it was a dope jacket. Yeah, yeah, it, was a, yeah. it was a dope jacket. Yeah. Um, how do you go about... Um, in, I was trying to talk about the process a bit because how do you uh, how do you know like sizes and then like pricing that how does that even work do you know what I mean? Um, sizes well I get measurements mm. from people and uh, I sketch it out I guess mm. and I just so in the start I always came up with like ideas what I'd think would be good so if a client reaches out to me he might like something I already have. Mm or he might have another idea that he wants to um, project. So we we work together, I guess, yeah. and then we create. Yeah, man. And then, yeah. and then pricing wise, how, how do you go about yeah. <laughs> these, these celebrities, man? How's, how does that work? Um, I just, you know, I just, I put my price on it, I guess. I don't yeah. even want to talk about pricing. <laughs> yeah, like, no, yeah, I hear that, I hear that, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's fair, I guess. Yeah, no, no, that makes sense, man, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> At what point did you start incorporating high-end high, high -end fashion into your designs? Because I know a lot of your designs were sort of custom-made, but then you started putting sort of Louis Machino, as we talked about, Verica Badu. At yeah. what point did you start putting sort of high-end fashion into your designs? Um, I was inspired by a film called uh, Pain and Fall. Oh, yeah, one of my favourites. <laughs> yeah, my yeah, favorites. yeah. So, and like one of my clients... Um, uh, he was inspired by a picture that um, 
I uploaded like years ago, like before I even done designs. So I had like a picture of the film, if that makes sense. Yeah. And they wanted me to recreate a piece yeah. from the film. So that's kind of how uh, inspired by like an Alpo kind of piece as what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah I know what Jackie's talking about, the yeah, movie jacket. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that's how. So, yeah. so yeah, that's how it started really. That's big, man. Mm -hmm. um, you talk about that being the inspiration to, you know, start putting high-end fashion into, into your designs. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about just you in general. Like, what inspires you to make the, the pieces that you make? Well, it stemmed from me just wanting to wear clothes that um, nobody else has seen, you know, because uh, there's nothing worse than like spending your money on something and then you walk down the street, someone else has got it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to make sure that me and my clients had a piece that no one would have when they step to like parties or events, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's, that's special to me and that's worth spending your money on something like that, you know? Yeah. Something personal to you. Nah, no, definitely. Yeah. Um, nah. No. Um, and then, a lot of the people that you've designed pieces for, um, we've talked about, are in Hollywood, um, over stateside. I mean, you've also done some UK stuff. Um, I yeah. saw the, the jacket done for Meeks Manny. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, which, yeah. Which was a big one uh, yeah, as yeah. well. Um, how do you see the UK fashion scene at the moment? Um, you've got people like Ben Jar and Trapstar doing really well yeah. uh, in terms of getting their brands out there. Um, yeah. But how do you see sort of the, the scene at the moment? Um, to be honest, I'm kind of like in my own world, you know, I don't really like pay attention mm. to what's going on. I see it, but um, I don't really like take it in. Yeah. I just focus on what I have to do and what I can bring to the table. So for someone that's um, looking at yourself um, and um, you know coming from where we come from, mm -hmm. what advice would you give to someone who wants to become a fashion designer like yourself? I would say do what makes you happy, you know? Do what makes you want to wake up, do what turns you on, I guess, mm. do you know what I'm saying? That's how you last long in life, whatever you want to do, do you know, fashion or non-fashion, do what makes you happy. So what's next for you in your fashion journey, bro, or, or your journey in general, man? What you got going on? Well, I want to start getting into like film. So um, I'm working on like an anime project at the moment. So I have a team that's working on creating stories based on my life in animation. So it's based off the book I was writing when I was like 18. So yeah. we're just trying to bring that to life. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to that, man. Yeah, I'm definitely. looking forward to that. Um, that should be dope. Um, where can people reach out to you? Where can people find out about these fly jackets? Yeah, man, where can uh, people access you? People can access me on Instagram. So J Parson, J-A-Y-E, P-A-R-S-O-N. Sick, yeah. man. Yeah. Well, bro, I want to big yourself up. Um, because you're doing some major things in the fashion world. Thank and you. And yeah, man, look forward to, to seeing what's, what's coming up with the anime project you've got going on. Yeah. And yeah, man, thanks for coming through. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Peace. What's going on, people? It's your boy, Jay Parson. Make sure you watch my interview. <laughs> 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 I do, I'm going to start laughing. <laughs> <laughs>